Uh, it's great to see everybody. It's been a, been a bit. Um, we just got off the field uh, 30 seconds ago, uh, day three of practice in the spring. So we were hitting, hitting a little bit, which is good, good competition. Um, it's been fun. I've been working primarily on the defensive side of the ball, which has been a lot of fun for me. And, uh, and competition has been good. It's really early to tell, uh, you know, where we're at. We got a lot of veterans back, so we're, uh, we're not, we're not having to, to really go at it too much. Everyone knows what they're doing. We're just trying to fine tune all the little details and, and, uh, continue to get, to get better. But first three days have been great. Uh, we're, we're fairly healthy. We still got the guys that are coming back that we all know about. And it was Zaire and TC and, uh, Kate and, and, Neeland and Ali and those guys are all still uh, coming back and uh, there were some of them were able to go through individual which is nice but I think we got 85 guys right now which is a very 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 unique thing here in the spring to have this many players so we got pretty good depth for the first time in a long time uh, so we're able to uh, to get through a couple injuries without having spring practice blow up which I think is every head coach's biggest fear you know you're a couple injuries away from not being able to practice and uh We've been handling it very well so far, and it's been it's been a good start. It's been a really good start, so I'm happy with it. So, so with that, I'll open it up to any of you guys. Coach, um, is is there any downside to not, to having so many veterans around? I mean, at spring practice, you typically think this is when we teach the new kids the new tricks and this, that, and the other. Um, is there a downside? <laughs> To not have I think, I, yeah, there really isn't, Alan. I mean, it's really for the, I mean, their leadership is unbelievable. And all we've done is kind of flip the reps. Uh, you know, watching KV on, Sambucci had a huge day. You know, we're, we're giving the young kids just get more reps than the old guys. You know what okay. I mean? Guys will go out there and get a rep of three, and then we'll let the young guys go in there for four, five, six, seven, you know? So um, it's been a lot of fun watching the, the young guys that are developing you know, get balls thrown to them and, and, uh, you know, it doesn't really affect the quarterback. So they're all getting balls from, from Caleb and he looked great today. And, uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun to watch the, the old guys still be there to keep, keep setting the standard of what, what our expectations are, but letting, you know, the majority, I'd say 60, 40, as opposed to in the season, it's like 90, 10, the guys that are going to play and the guys that aren't, uh, and now it's more 60, 40 young guys. So it's a, it's a great mix. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been nice for three practices thus, thus far. Well, well I've got you. Um, can you discuss the um, COVID-19 challenges? I know last fall was amazing that you came through it as well as you did. Um, but, you know, things are starting to get better, we hear. And, uh, you know. Knock on wood. Fun. Yeah, right, exactly. I'm on my way to get a vaccine here shortly, by the way. Oh, great. Yeah, so, but do you still have the same challenges every day, testing and the, that you were going through before? Yeah, 100%. I mean, we are in off-season testing, so the testing isn't as ramped up as it was in the fall, but they're okay. testing. Our guys are testing today, 2.30. Um, so the only thing that's really changed is testing. Um Everything else is the same. The masks in the in the weight room, the mask in the building, the uh, the spreading out when anytime where anyone's in the building, uh, the checking the surveys when you walk in the door. Uh, we got some new even even some new equipment where you can uh, put your phone in this box and close it and hit a button and it'll clean everything. We got these boxes. We actually got more uh, more mitigation now, like more more protection now than we did then, and uh, and we've gotten in a good rhythm. I mean. I, I couldn't have been more proud of our, 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 our staff in the fall and really the players too. They're the ones that have to make the decision to control the bubbles around them when they leave here. Uh, but they did an unbelievable job. Our medical staff and, and administration uh, and Sydney Q's Health Center was phenomenal and they still are. And uh, so it's been, we gained a lot of confidence for what we were able to do in the spring. And when we did have someone get it, it did not spread. It did not go through any of the rooms. It did not go through the team. We do still, it's not like we're immune to it by any means, uh, but, but one doesn't turn into seven, one turns into one, you know, and that's, uh, and that's a credit to the guys and the training staff and everybody. And, and we've been able to keep that going and we know we got to keep it going uh, until we get out of this thing together. Hey, this is my last question. I promise <laughs> I've got to take off. Uh, be, 
besides G, and obviously G has had an amazing uh, off season prior to the NFL draft. But are we going to lose anybody else? Do we know of besides G from that senior class? Yeah, we had uh, what well, D Eskridge obviously is doing an unbelievable job, and I'm excited. His pro day is coming up here, and uh, he, everything he's done, he's done right, and I'm, I'm proud that he got to show everybody in the country you know, what type of receiver he is developed into, you know, and, and without those six games, they wouldn't have seen that. We've seen it, uh, but he got to show everybody. And uh, the other guy that was at the senior bowl was Jalen. Uh, Jalen Moore did a great job. They had him playing guard tackle. Every, all the reports I've gotten on both of those guys is uh, they're doing a phenomenal job, which is great. Uh, and then Trey, Trey got on the portal. He's at Arizona now. I, I think we had two guys get on the portal. Uh, was it two? Two that were going to move to a lower level, which was a great thing. We helped them. They both landed. Uh, one went one double A non scholarship. One went to a Division two school. Uh, they just wanted to play more, you know. And uh, other than that, uh, not that I know of right now. You know, it's a it's obviously an evolving thing. But uh, our guys have been doing a good job, and and uh, you know, obviously we want them to stay, and and uh, they they all are here, you know. So uh, there's no one else that I know of. Tim, the uh, portal giveth and taketh away Deuteronomy 2022 or something like that. <laughs> we know it is uh, taketh. Has it giveth yet? Uh, yeah, we have two guys uh, that we have. We have announced that they're coming yet. I mean, they, they got, they have, they're not here yet. You know, we have a uh, Hosey is a, is a defensive tackle. Um, from East Carolina, who we're really excited about. And uh, Nunley is a wide receiver uh, from uh, a one double A school down in Tennessee. And, um, and so both those guys, we, we have more, we're, we're, we're on, we're on it. You know, we're, we're, we're in recruiting right now. We're looking at the portal every day. We got a couple more spots that, uh, that we're looking to fill, you know, um, and we're, we're, we're excited about what, what guys we got a lot of guys that are interested right now we're trying to find the right guys we've done we've done such a great job the coaching staff has done a really good job of finding the right fits you know guys like you know Ladarius and and Mixon and Kincaid and uh and Bryson Bryson Garner and Theron Coleman like we have done a really good job over the last three years of finding the right fits that not only do they come in but they come in and have success you know you want a kid that comes here to have the type of impact that the kid wants to have, you know, you don't want to bring a kid in to be a depth guy, you know? And, uh, and we had one that came in and was a depth guy, Collins, and he did a great job, Tim. So, uh, so we just, we got to make sure we're continually picking guys that are going to come in and make a difference. And we got, we definitely got some spots. We only signed 19 guys. And then we got two more guys coming that I just mentioned. So we're at 21. So we got four spots and uh, we're trying to be really selective, but the, the uh, kind of getting to know your team in the spring, although I, I know a lot about this team because it's so many people back, but, uh, you know, wanted to wait past spring on a couple of them just to make sure we, we are bringing people in in the spots that are really spots of need. You know, we, we moved uh, Deshaun Bustle the corner. Uh, he had a pick today. It was very impressive. He's, he's really coming along as a corner, but there's a lot of things we got to figure out uh, before we decide what we're going to do with those last couple spots. You also had uh, some coaching changes. Can you go through that and what everybody will be doing this fall? Yeah, so we got um, happy, you know, Chris Chestnut. We announced him yesterday. I've known Chris a long. It's funny because I left here in 99. Chris got here in 02. He left in 04. And then I came back in 05. So uh, we never were here at the same time, but I always knew of him. Uh, when he was a player here, he got into coaching. I got into coaching. We obviously played each other in the bowl game at the first responders bowl in Dallas. So I got to see him then, but we've always texted back and forth. And he was always a guy in my mind that, you know, if the time ever came that, you know, he would, he would be a great fit. I mean, he was down there at Western Kentucky, the defensive coordinator there is a good friend of mine. And uh, he's also really close with James Adams and uh, Josh Gaddis, who are good friends of mine. So we, we've had a lot of connections and, and I've been following him and uh, the opportunity arose when uh, Coach Moreland got a chance to go to the New York Jets. 
And uh, so we had a spot open. So he came in as our tight end coach. Uh, coach Evans and Coach Bath will be the two that'll be the coordinators. They'll be the co-coordinators. Um, I think everyone knows I'm heavily involved on that side of the ball normally, and I will be again in the fall. And those two have kind of picked up the role of what Jake did as a coordinator and making sure that, well, we're staying on top of things and the offense is organized. And, um, and so, so it's been good that we have a really, I'm really happy with obviously our offensive staff. Jake did a great job of, of making a collaborative effort. And, uh, and I, my biggest concern with Jake on was to make sure that that staff remained that way, you know, and it's been, it's been a great, it's been a great transition and we're happy to have Chris here and, and so, uh, and I think he's pretty fired up to be home as well. And then one final one for me, the offensive and defensive lines, you know, that's where football is won and lost. And you're as veteran as you've ever been mm -hmm. here. Can you just go through the lines and talk about how you see that coming together personnel wise? Yeah, we've been, you know, I love people. I think I'm, I might be different than a lot. I love spring ball. Like spring ball is the time to try things, you know, and you, you can never know if you hit a home run without swinging. So we have, uh, we moved some pieces around uh, on the offensive line. Obviously Brooks is out. He'll be back. Uh, he had to have surgery in the off season, but he'll be back at right tackle. And then Dylan at right guard is, is back and doing a great job. We've moved uh, Caliendo, at least for the spring, Caliendo is playing center. Our, the guy, he's been our left guard for, for seems like 12 years now uh he's he's playing center right now he's always been our backup center uh with Jalen being gone we moved Wesley French out to left tackle uh he's doing a great job of left. he was a tackle the whole time I just put him at center last year and uh and then the left guard's gonna be a battle we got like we got a ton of people uh Addison West and Gideon and and Campbell uh they're all kind of battling for that spot we we you know we're on the portal maybe bringing a guy that's a guard if he's a tackle great if he's a guard great because we have so many guys that can do so many things um and then you got the young guys like Stewie and Vanderbilt's best young tackles that are developing so with the flexibility that a guy like Wesley French and Mike Caliendo give you uh you can really play the the next best you know when you have four guys that have been playing together for such a long time uh I'm really excited about where we're at, uh, at the O-line. Now D-line is funny because a lot of the injuries aren't over yet. So, uh, when we, we got Hosey that we added, which I'm really excited to get him here. Um, obviously inside you still have Ralph Holly, who looks phenomenal, uh, you know, and, you know, we're hoping to get Will McKay back, you know, uh, we're hoping he comes back and he'll be and an Aguirre still here and Fisk. I mean, those guys are going to be in the middle and, and helping us in there. Um, Sherwin's another one that's injured right now. He got hurt last year. He should be in the mix. Uh, and then you got your DNs. And Ollie's out right now, but we know we'll be back. Marshawn Nealon's out right now. We'll know he'll be back. Hosey's going to be playing outside with them. You got Andre Carter back. Uh, and then so so it's it's funny because we got about four or five of those guys out right now, uh, but we still got another four starters that are playing. So our our twos right now in spring are really they're the young kids you know, and, uh, and they need to develop. So, so there's a big drop off between our ones and twos when those five veterans come back. I mean, to have a guy, you know, you have Ollie and, and, and Carter and they got KG and Hosey all on the edges. I really like our young defensive lineman that we signed as well uh, that I think could come in and make a difference. So, so the greatest thing is there's numbers, you know, and that, that uh, that's going to definitely change when we get, when we get healthy again, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, that group's played, made a ton of plays and that's where the game's won and lost, you know, it makes, makes the linebackers jobs easier. And, and, uh, but that's going to be the strength of our team. It's been the strength of our team for a long time and it's going to continue to be. And, and so it's been, uh, it's been fun having the flexibility on both sides, uh, to teach guys different positions so that, so that we get banged up on the defensive line, like we did last year, that we have enough bodies. Uh, you know, we had one, one game where, you know, Corbin moment played the end. That's where we were at. You know, like when you have to take, take people that are defense or linebackers and play D line, you know, that you're struggling. So uh, we're healthy. We're deep. We're veteran uh, at the OND lines, which is going to be the key to uh, us, us winning. Hey coach, uh, aside from um, 
aside from the offensive line and Bustle moving to cornerback, have there been any other position changes? Hmm. I don't think there have been, to be honest with you. That's rare for us, huh? I guess they're, well, yeah, offensive line we moved. Uh, Bustle. Uh, Harrison Taylor. Harrison Taylor and um, Harrison Taylor is playing both field safety and Sam, you know? Uh, but he's still playing safety, which is what he played last year. But we, we have him playing some Sam linebacker as well. Um, so, so that's the... That's really the only other one. Everyone else is just playing their positions, and we're we're excited to get Zaire back uh, and TC back. Those are going to be two two big ones, you know that that were that were slated starters last year. They got hurt during training camp, and and they've had their surgeries. They're running around again. I think they'll hopefully be cleared sometime in the summer to start trying to build themselves back up um, to figure out you know where we're going to do because we do have a very very talented linebacking core. You know, A.J. Thomas went down from field safety to Sam. It was all conference. And you got Corvin and Zaire was our Sam before. Uh, and then you have, you know, Selig and Boone Bonima who are playing lights out right now. And so um, so we got, we have a good, a really good group there. And, uh, and we're excited about it. And then some of them have flexibility. Obviously, A.J. Thomas is a great safety. He can play both, Sam and safety. And, uh, and that's always a, a, a tough transition in the middle of training camp to say, hey, you're now our Sam. You got to go in there with the big boys and play the B gap, which is between two 300 pound dudes. And, uh, and AJ did it. It was all conference. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him. And he might go back to safety with this is kind of the fun part of spring ball or moving pieces around and trying to figure out the best 11. And really, but nowadays with college football, you need to find your best 22 you know, on both sides of the ball. And that's what we're, we're trying to continue to build that depth. So, so we, we don't have a situation, you know, when midway through that ball state game, when AJ Thomas got a concussion, I mean, that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, we were, we were thin already. And once he went down, we, we started, it was, it was rough, you know, and that, we made it to the last game to get to that point. But once he went down that second half, we were, we were juggling quite a bit and we just got to get ourselves to a point where, even with one, two, or three injuries, we still have a plan, and, and we're, we're, that's what spring ball is all about. Speaking of spring ball, I know uh, I know you said you love spring ball. So after five or six month off season last year of straight virtual learning, just meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings, have you noticed a difference already in spring ball this year, or has it allowed you guys to do something different because you feel that the mental knowledge of your team is, is well beyond where it would normally be. I would say B. I, I totally agree with you. We are we are doing something different this year than we've ever done. You know, you you always try to adjust and adapt to the situation that's handed to you. And so this year is the first time we've ever, we're really, it's going to be hard to explain this, but we're really only having 11 practices of our 15. Um there's four extra practice days that count as practice days where we're only going out on the field with helmets on and doing individual. And it's, it's great because it, it allows us to get it done in three and a half weeks. I, I felt like it was so important. And I feel like we were right in watching our guys' bodies. They have not had a sustained amount of time in the weight room since last year at this time. It has been a major problem for every, every program in the country. So we normally start spring ball, as you guys all know, early in February. And I wanted to give them two months to lift, you know, January and February. And they did, and they look good and they got their strength back. They're starting to look better and feel better. And, and so, so I had to kind of I had to squeeze spring break or spring ball in before spring break hits. So we're actually getting spring ball done in like three and a half weeks. Uh, I don't want my guys banging four times a week. So we're doing one helmets day where it's just individual and it's fun to have the coaches be able to be with the players one-on-one -on -one in small groups. And we call them training days. Mondays are our training days. And uh, our first real practice, which is practice two for us, but real football practice number one was Tuesday and our second real practice was today. But if you look at their script, it says practice three you know, as far as our 15. So we definitely have made adjustments because of COVID and because of things that 
I want to give our players a chance to be the biggest, fastest, strongest players in August, you know, and our guys know what they're doing and we don't need 15 practices to prove that, you know, so we can really focus on getting their bodies to feel good and getting technique work done on Mondays and then practice hard on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And uh, I mean, we're only three days into it, but so far so good, you know, but, but all those adjustments were made because of, the world we live in and what they've what their bodies have been through in the past you know eight nine months we did these training days in august we had some really unique things happen in august we were on we were off talking to the league what can you do we're kind of back on we're kind of not back on no one knows and there was a couple days where we just did these training days because we were allowed to and we put helmets on guys and we divided them up into three groups i wanted to be out on the field with caleb and like three receivers and that's it and I just wanted to work with them for 40 minutes on whatever route we need to be great at. And we did it. And, you know, Coach Espo had like the senior D lineman in so he could work on pass rush moves. That the freshmen, with the freshmen, we learned them how to get into a stance. Like the freshman group was like, it was like, you know, addition and subtraction, simple, you know, for 30 minutes of how to get in a stance. And then the next group, the vets came in and he was working on pass rush moves and very high level stuff. So, the kids loved it when they felt like they were getting trained, personal attention. They all have their own personal trainers. And here I got a bunch of professional coaches that never get to really work one-on-one -on -one without a whole group. You know, I'm a, I'm Bill Kenny. I got 20 old linemen and I want to work with my vets and do these things. That'll make them better. My young kids need these things. So we got to try these training days in, in August and the kids fell in love with them. So we, we decided every Monday this training camp or this spring spring ball training camp, uh, we would do it, and, and it's it's been great so far. And uh, it was a very unique thing that wouldn't have come about without COVID, you know. And we're trying to take advantage of those things. That, that sounds like actually a very very beneficial type of situation, you know. Yeah, uh, and it it does. They love the attention, and they feel like they're getting. Caleb has one issue that I wanted to work on with him with his drop, and no one none of the other quarterbacks have it. So it was like, hey, we're going to your individual side where I'm going to work with this one step that we need to get fixed, you know? And then we got him and Sky together and said, you need him and D together and said, we're going to work on this route until we can't screw it up. And then we'll go to the next one, you know? Because normally when the whole team's out there, you're flying. You got five minutes, the clock's running. Everyone gets a hitch. Everyone gets a slant. Everyone gets a curl. I want to run that guy. I want to run that route so we can't screw it up, you know? And I think it showed uh, in our past game in the fall you know, I really think when we got going, because a couple of those routes were the routes that we hammered in those training days uh, with the individuals, just two of them out there. And uh, so anyway, it's been very beneficial and, and the kids like it. And it, it might be something we grow into in the fall. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. You know, I'm like a couple months ahead, which is, which COVID is a way I, I handed in their, their summer schedule through like July yesterday. And I felt, I was so nervous telling them because I was like, this is probably going to change. At least everything has changed for the last month or last year. I'm hoping this is the next four months of your life. Uh, but, you know, we're all adjusting and adapting. I got one more for you, Coach. Uh, oh, go ahead, Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Thanks, Jamal. Um, with the way that last season ended, uh, did you feel uh, maybe a, a bigger sense of motivation uh, to get back on the field? Uh, did you see any added motivation for your players getting back out there? Of course. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, we, we, the one thing I was proud of in the last game is that we showed up and played, you know, I, I felt like two years ago against Northern, we didn't play well, you know, we were pressing, we weren't executing very well. Offensively. I felt like we were chasing. Uh, we never got into any kind of rhythm. Uh, last year we got to the last game again and, and we played well. I mean, we moved the ball, we controlled the clock, uh, we had about four or five plays that were the, the difference in the game. It goes from winning by 14 to losing by three. Uh, uh, you know, we had a snap, we had a, a shank kick from the nine um, and we had one busted coverage, you know? So, uh, so those things stick with you. You hold on to them. I mean, I'm still mad that Pennington threw a touchdown pass with nine seconds left in the, in the Mac championship game in 1999. I still can't get over that. You know, you hold it with you, you know? And, uh, and so it was, you know, it, it's been one of those, how, you know, how do we overcome this? But I was, I was proud that we, I, I felt like we grew in 
knowing it was a big game. We showed up, we played, we didn't get the job done, period, the end. Uh, I keep always telling them we were, we were the first losers of the West. You know, I hate to say it, you, we came in second place behind Ball State, but we still were just the first losers. I guess that's better than the fourth losers, but we didn't get it done. So, uh, so we've been, we have a chip on our shoulder and we got a lot of work to do to get into that situation again, where you get into a last game that matters, you know, and uh, I did see growth from two years ago to this year, but there's a lot of kids that have a, a lot of players on our team that have a chip on their shoulder right now. Uh, and, and they know they get another opportunity, you know, because of COVID, a lot of them get another opportunity, you know, so uh, we're definitely not going to let that pass. We're going to continue to get better and, and grow this thing the right way. You mentioned position changes a little bit ago. Um, I have a question about a guy who's long changed positions, but I'm going to ask you how long it takes to settle in. When you look at a guy like with Darius Jefferson, who was a high school quarterback, you know, mm -hmm. he goes to Michigan State, plays a little bit as a freshman, you know, transfers to you. It seems like last year the light really went on for him after some years of just trying to figure out how to play the position, quite honestly. You know, do you feel like it takes one, some guys a little bit of time to really master that change? And two, did you notice that from Jefferson that this is a guy who definitely knows exactly what to, what to do and where to go now? Yeah, I really did. I think I think Coach Bath has done an unbelievable job. Like those two gelled so well, you know, that you saw Ladarius more and more comfortable as the year went on, you know, and and being able to, I mean, in some of those games, we leaned on them, you know, especially like a, a Central Michigan game where they're loading the box and we got to run the ball and then he's he's just falling forward. And but there, there's still other parts. One thing you learn about Ladarius is he is so hard on himself, you know. And, and one of the first conversations we had this off season was what does he need to do to take the next step? Because I think everyone's noticed he's taken a big step, right? He looks, the one thing that no one notices is how well of a pass blocker he is. I mean, he does things in pass pro where he's got one responsibility and a defensive end gets turned loose and he's big enough to challenge the DN. And having to practice Tuesday, I don't know what the heck our freshman right tackle was doing, but he decided to go block the Sam linebacker and he left the Darius out of DN. And the Darius redirected and, and just smoked. I mean, I mean, you got a, he was 260 pound to the end. So you better hit him to stop his momentum. And he did. We got the ball off. It ended up being a 10 yard gain instead of a sack, you know? So uh, all those little nuances that you look at, can he break tackles? You know, can he break? So it, we're really working on his speed because he is, he's more sudden than he looks. Uh, but we want to develop that. You know, I tell him the story of, you know, Bellamy and D, you know, when they got here and they were four eights the first time we tested them and then four ones and then, I'm oh, sorry, four, four, one, they're four, four, eights and then four, four, ones and then four, three, eights. And then shoot, Bells ran a four, two, nine eventually, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and it's that development process. So, yeah, I think he, I think he took a huge step. It does take some time having a year of it at Michigan state definitely helped him. He was far along when he got here. Um, but I really feel like, Last year, he took a big step, and now we need him to have that mentality, which he is built with, uh, to do more, you know. And when I know he was – I think he was an all-conference player. I'm pretty sure he was. Um, but he wants more. That's not that's not the end-all, be-all for him. And uh, and if we can if we can take what everyone saw, which was really good, and find the little weaknesses and make them, make them strengths, then, then you got a, a big, physical, fast uh, team player, you know, that, that'll do – do do a lot of great things here for that. He's got two years left now, you know, and so uh, so I'm excited for what he can bring to the table. Coach, did I hear you right when you said that uh, you're spending a little bit more time with the defense to start spring ball here? Yeah. Can you talk about why that is? Yeah, you know, a couple of things is well, I, I'm the extra set of eyes on the offensive side of the ball. So I literally stand behind the offense and and I help. I mean, I'm on the right guard. I'm on the right tackle. I'm on the running back, the quarterback, the wideouts. Like I'm an extra set of eyes that can always help, you know, and, and I never do that on the defensive side of the ball. I never get to coach those guys. I'm, and it's something that I always, I talk to a ton of coaches, head coaches that always talk about, it's really tough to be a head coach and be on one side of the ball and really get the players on the other side to, to feel that, to feel the love you have for both sides when you, when you spend all your time. I mean, we spend a lot of time together and I'm always on one side of the ball. And so I decided to go on the other side, teach it, 
learn it really. I, I kind of know it, but I want to know it. I mean, inside out, forwards, backwards. Um, I'm helping out with the corners right now, you know, cause I don't know how you coach. I don't know how one, one coach can see a guy on each side of the field. You know, the linebacker coach can stand in the back and coach three guys. Safeties has a chance. We have two D line coaches already, one coaching interior, one coaching the ends. Um, so I'm coaching the corners and, uh, and I've, I've, I've learned the corner position and now I'm understanding the Sam and the ins and outs and the checks and the calls. And uh, I've had a blast. I'm telling you, the last two practices have gone faster for me than probably any two practices I've ever coached. Um, and the offensive guys think I'm telling them the plays, but I'm not. I don't even look at the script. The script stays in my pocket. Um, and I, I'll see routes screwed up. I'll also coach the offense a little bit, but I've had more fun in the past month and a half. Uh, just being around the defensive guys, putting my two cents into this is what the offense is thinking, trying to trying to help with any additions we can add that's going to not really affect our defense, but but make it really hard for an offensive from an offensive perspective. And uh, and I have the ability to do that. And, and after talking to a couple other coaches that are head coaches and offensive guys, um, I think it's going to help our team. I think I hope it helps our defense. It's helping me as a coach It's helping our team as a as a unit and I'll still be going back there when, when, when push comes to shove and we got to call plays and stuff like that. But uh, I think it was what, what was best for our, the program, our defensive players, and hopefully I'm, I bring some value. I don't know. I don't know if I bring value yet. I'm hoping I can bring some value to that side of the ball as well. Uh, I had my first idea the other day that that was pretty good and they liked it. So we're, we're going to try some, something that I, I, I want to try. And um uh, and, and it's, so it's good. It's just a fresh set of eyes over there. We've been running the same stuff on offense for, for three years now. We're going into year four, you know? And, uh, and so we're only going into year three on the defensive side. So it's been, uh, we've got a lot more coaching tur- turnover on the, in the secondary, you know? And uh, guys have gotten great opportunities. And so uh, it's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, really getting connected with our defensive players, being in the huddle, jumping up and down with them celebrating bustles pick running on the sideline with him today so uh it's something that i did calculate i calculated it was a calculated decision and it's really paid off here early on in uh, since spring ball anything else guys i, I got one uh, yeah, here yeah one uh, more for me too well i can take two more yeah, uh, patrick you go first yeah go ahead. Right. Um, you mentioned uh sam bucci um any other young guys standing out uh based on what they did in the weight room and uh, what they're doing with their reps in practice Hmm. Um, young guys, I would say, I mean, Sambucci and Kavion Mack have, uh, you know, Kentrell Beck, I talked about last spring. He's still hurt. I'm, I'm excited to watch him. Uh, Adam Vandervest is a guy you're going to have to watch at tackle. He's looking, he's looking good. He's moving around. Well, um, you know, Damari Roberson's a guy who's been banged up. He's back. He, I consider him a young guy. He's finally healthy. He finally moves around like a, like the player we all thought, you know, he would be. Uh, so he's what I would consider a, a young guy. But, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, standing out, they're all working hard. You know, they didn't get a lot of reps, so they're they're still figuring out. But uh, those are the the couple off the top of my head that that have, have shown some promise, you know, and, uh, and could hopefully get into some rotations and, and help us out early. Coach at wide out now you lost D and now Bustle's moving over to secondary. Uh, how would you rate your depth at wide receiver and you know, thin to, thin to win you. right now? <laughs> it's it's we're we're thinner than we've been in a while. Um, it's nice when you have three all conference receivers. You know it's, it's losing one, but it's great to have two coming back. Most teams don't have two coming back, so Jalen looks great. Sky looks great. Corey Crooms is a guy who played a ton last year. He looks great out there. So I feel like we have three veterans. We're bringing in a, a senior in Bryce Nunley, uh, who was an All-American 1AA player his uh, sophomore year. Uh, so we're excited about him. And then we have Kavion and Sambucci, who are, who are doing a great job. So we still are too deep. We have we signed four uh, that are going to be coming in, and we got two walk-ons coming in. So that's probably one of the – the, and we got uh, Cam Cooper back. Forgot about him. So, um, so we still have a pretty pretty good depth there. We got two All Conference players. We got a transfer coming in that we're excited about. We knew we were pretty excited about what Kavion and Sambucci brought to the table. 
Uh, still brought a transfer in just because uh, I want to continue to be dynamic at the wide receiver spot, you know, and, uh, and I'm really excited about the four wideouts that we signed. So, uh, so right now, when you go out there, we're, we're pretty thin, but you had those four freshmen and you had Bryce when he gets here in the summertime and, and you're going to add five more to, I think a pretty talented group already. Uh, so it's definitely that, that, that group is a work in progress, but there's a real, a lot of good clay, uh, you know, and some proven playmakers already out there. You know, we just, we were very fortunate last year to have Sky and D and Jalen all out there. And, and every time one of them got hurt or missed a game, Crooms came in and played great. You know, Crooms is ready. And we brought Bryce in too. And then with two freshmen plus uh, two true freshmen and then four uh, more that we signed. So it's, uh, I really, I think that room's still healthy, but um, it definitely looks different. We've had depth for a while and I think we'll have depth. We just might not have that depth till uh, middle of August, you know? Um, but it's it's a talented, talented group, you know? And the la last one for me, the quarterback room, pretty deep. Caleb has come a long way but you don't win the Mid-American Conference without the best quarterback in the league. Is he capable of making that happen? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I don't think you, you – it's hard. Even in six games, you can't be number two in pass efficiency in the country and, and not be pretty special, you know, to the point where I would say – and maybe I'm pointing the finger at myself, but by the end of the year, I really, I really, I really trusted him to drop back and throw it. You know, we tried to protect him. We had a good run game. You have a first time starter at quarterback and he goes out and he's number two in the country in pass efficiency behind Mac Jones. Um, and I think the top four in pass efficiency, three of them were finalists for the Heisman. Uh, so he has that type of ability. Uh, and, and so I think we can do more now. I mean, he's show he's shown that he can make decisions. He can check down. He'll use his backs. I mean, you just watch him at the end of the Toledo game. He has the patience to be a pro. You know, we always say you don't go broke taking a profit. Just keep taking profits. They don't need to be all the big ones. Um, but on Monday, you know, he had a great day. On Tuesday, he got greedy. And today he was patient again and he, and he, and he checked down more, you know. So, uh, you know, I think that's a weapon that we used last year fairly well. But I think there's a lot more we can ask of him. You know, I wanted him to have a successful, efficient year without putting a ton of pressure on it. I didn't want to get an empty all the time but I'm not afraid to get an empty anymore, you know? So there's, there's going to be a lot more we can do uh, in the passing game now because uh, he's really proven he's comfortable. He understands it. He's reading the game fast. Uh, we were really good on third down. He made some unbelievable third down conversions with check downs and shuffle check downs. And so I'm really, I'm really happy with his development, you know? And, uh, and I really think as if, you know, being number two in the country and pass efficiency isn't, it isn't like, boom, he's arrived. I think if he hasn't already, he's gonna, you know, um, if he can continue to do the things that he's put on tape now, um, I'm excited about what his next, I mean, I think he's got three years left technically because of COVID. I mean, what, what these, I don't know if he'll use them all. We'll see uh, one year at a time, but I'm, I'm excited to watch him develop. And then Karshman's had a great, and Salapak are both doing a good job. Karshman's getting rid of the ball on time. He's very efficient. Um, I kind of, he's kind of like the Tom Brady, you know, like ball, his back foot, it's the ground balls out, you know, and, and he doesn't, it doesn't always look like he's got a really strong arm, but it's not the prettiest thing, but it's efficient and efficient and efficient. So, uh, and then Salapak's learning. He's, he's really talented. He reminds me a lot of John Wasink, you know, Salapak does. Uh, and then we got Marion coming in. So it's going to be, it's going to be a great room. Uh, but man, it does feel good to have a, that was our big question mark last year. You know, was your quarterback going to be, he hadn't played before really. He's going to have to play. He's got to lead the team to win a championship. You got to have, you know, got to have a quarterback. And, uh, and we definitely have one of those. And, and I think we're, we're developing him the right way so that when we take the gloves off, which we had to a couple times and you always have to in certain situations throughout a game. Uh, but once you have that confidence uh, and the receivers and the run game, you can, uh, I think we scored like 41 points a game last year and, and now we got to find a way to get to 45, you know, that's <laughs> just the mentality, you know, we can, and, uh, and we can be more aggressive in our spots and then he can handle it. And, and if they don't give it to us, he'll check down and, and then he just checked down to Ladarius. He's fine. We'll get him in some space. Um, so I'm really proud of his development and I'm, I really hope it can take our offense to the next level.
Well, there's no doubt he's an elite talent and, a, yeah. and just making that next step to a championship level quarterback is the one thing he hasn't done yet. And yeah. he's going to have that opportunity. He did. He had a great game. And, and that win, I was a little bit worried about him throwing in that win at Ball State. He had no trouble. I mean, he can rip it through the wind now. I mean, some guys can throw it in the wind. Some guys can't. And, uh, and man, we, we started getting more aggressive as the game went on with four verts. And he was slicing it right through the wind. And he's got a special arm talent, you know. And, and uh, I just like his work out of that because he's still, you know, we picked for him. It's Aaron Rodgers. Like, we, he, he loves Aaron Rodgers. So, we – we studied Aaron Rodgers. I, I downloaded film. I even brought him in. I said, what's your offseason study? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, who are you going to study? I'm like, who's your favorite quarterback? He's like, Aaron Rodgers. I'm like, well, I can get all the film you want of Aaron Rodgers. He's like, really? I said, yeah. And so he did a whole offseason study of his feet and his shoulders and his eyes. And, and, and he's just, he's kind of getting addicted to trying to be great, you know, and that's the mentality you need. And he's got tons of time to do it. There'll be ups and downs, but but the, the, the want to is there and the growth mindset is there. And, and uh, man, what a, what a great first year he had. And, and now I expect it to continue to, to grow. And I'd love, I can't wait to see it.